for the facial bumps. The stuff that you're gonna have the next test. I can just quiz you really fast. And I can't, I can't wait to see something. If you have time, can we go over the labeling? Yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, facial bumps. How many facial bumps are there? They're only one up. So they're, they all have two bones except for which two? The ulnar and the animal. Yeah, the ulnar and the Okay, let's talk about the maxilla. So remember the maxilla is the largest immovable facial bone? What's the only movable facial bone? Mandible. Mandible. Good. Okay, composition of the maxilla. First of all, let's talk about the body. The body is the center portion, and what does it contain? Sinuses. Good. They contain the maxillary sinuses, and we know that they're also known as the antrum of hymor. If we see fluid in the maxillary sinuses, if it's non-trauma, it's just sinusitis, so it's just gunk or whatever. If it's a trauma patient, then it's probably blood. And it indicates a facial fracture. Okay, let's talk about the frontal process. Okay, the frontal process of the maxilla extends superiorly and articulates superiorly with what bone? Superiorly. Oh, frontal. Yeah, the frontal bone. Sorry. It articulates laterally with what bone? Oh, anteriorly, sorry. Nasal. Good. Are you about to try? <laughs> <laughs> And posteriorly, it articulates with what? Yeah. Good, lateral. Lateral. Should we know all that? Yeah. It just wasn't in your highlight, you know, so that's why I was asking. Frontal bone, anteriorly is the nasal bone. Mainly know the nasal bone. Okay. Because I like, I want you to know. Say, that's what you have highlighted. Did I? Okay. But the other ones weren't, so I was yeah. asking. Okay, let's talk about the alveolar process of the maxilla. Remember, it's the spongy portion that accommodates the roots of the upper teeth. Okay, the horizontal portion of the maxilla is also known as the palatine process, and it forms the anterior part of the hard palate. What forms the posterior part of the hard palate? The palatine bone. So the two maxilla unite where? The acanthium. Okay, in the area of the acanthium, but what's the anatomical structure? Anterior nasal spine. All right, anterior nasal spine. Know what a cleft palate is? That's when the palatine process of the maxilla fails to unite. Okay, zygomas, also known as malars. They form um, most of the lateral wall and part of the floor of the orbit. Lacrimals are considered the smallest bones of the skull and know what lacrimal means. Near tears. Near tears. Good. Lacrimals articulate posteriorly with what? Lateral masses. Good. The lateral masses, also known as labyrinths of the ethmoid bone. Okay, nasal bones. Inferior ends of the nasal bones, we call them the nasal spines. Don't get it mixed up with anterior nasal spine. That's on the maxilla. The very tip of the nasal bones are called the nasal spines. They articulate posteriorly with what bone? We just talked about it. The frontal process of the maxilla. Good, the frontal process of the maxilla. So if we went starting starting at the nasal bones and work your way back. We go nasal bones, what's next? Frontal process of the maxilla. Right. What comes after that? Going posteriorly. Lacrimal. Then after that? 
it's in there. It's just not the way I'm saying it. Oh, I see. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because we went over each thing individually. I just want to make sure that you understand. You're going from like, we're going can you do from that again? front to back. Okay. 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 So from front, it's the nasal bones coming posteriorly. It's the uh, frontal process of the maxilla. Then it's the lacrimal. And then it's the ethmoid, lateral masses. Okay. Okay, the nasal septum. The nasal septum, keep in mind, we have a bony nasal septum and a cartilaginous portion. Um, to see a deviated, meaning it's just crooked, and every, almost everybody has a deviated septum, the best projection is a water spew. Okay. okay, orbit. Okay, so there, the two basic parts to the orbit. What's the one that's the most anterior portion? What is the most anterior portion of the orbit? What's the it called? Base. The base. Okay. So it's considered quadrilateral. So it has four sides. So it has four sides. It's kind of named like a house. So you have the upper portion, the roof, the lower portion is the floor, and then the medial wall and the lateral wall. Okay. For some reason, the registry likes this next statement. The base forms a 37 degree angle with the median sagittal plane. Don't ask me why that's significant. I don't know. Okay, now the apex is the narrow posterior point. That's where the optic foramen is. And it, another one of those registry things, forms a 30 degree angle with the OML. Okay, so the seven bones that compose the orbit, if you like the mnemonic, eating McDonald's makes fat, sassy people lazy. I did not make that up, it's been around forever. So the first bone is the ethmoid, and it makes a part of what? The medial wall. wall. The medial wall. The, mat, the malar bone makes up the lateral part of the floor. That's good. The, the malar makes up most of the lateral wall and just a little bit of the floor. The maxilla. Most of the floor. Most of the floor. Good, most of the floor. What is the frontal makeup? The roof. And the roof. Good, the roof. The sphenoid. Part of the posterior wall. Good, part of the posterior wall. The palatine. Small portion of the posterior wall. All right, just a little teeny piece of the posterior wall and the lacrimal. The part of the medial wall. Good, part of the medial wall. You said the frontal bone is the orbit? The roof. The roof. Oh, yes. And the, the roof, R O O F. Where does it come from? Roof? Roof. roof. Okay. Like the roof of the house. Roof. That's what I was doing. I put roof? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the roof, roof. <laughs> Blow to the eye. Good. So the globe of the eye nowhere blows a hole. It blows a hole in the floor, which I've seen on registry. They say the roof. No, it's the floor. Mm -hmm. The globe of the eye will blow a hole in the floor of the orbit. Wow. Okay, never know that it's best seen in the waters. Mm -hmm. If you're taking the test and you don't know which projection, what projection is, is this best seen? Pick waters. Waters. Because it's considered the money shot of the facial scenes. You can see about everything. Okay, tripod fracture, also known as free floating malar. Uh, just know that it's a direct flow to the cheek, to the malar bone, it, and the malar disconnects from the frontal, the temporal, and the maxilla. Page three. Page three. Under the item. Ah, sorry. Oh, okay. Thank you. We have to know Palantine. Oh, you mean parts of the nasal septum? I didn't put it on your test, no. Or the palatine bones? Palatine bones? Or the vulvar? Just know that the palatine bone forms the posterior portion of the hard palate. What form? Yeah, we went over that. What 
forms the anterior portion of the hard cover. Oh, we can put on this. Oh, duh. Know the, that the vomer forms an inferior portion of the bony nasal septum. And the nasal septum, do you want us to know just the, about the deviated septum? Yep. So we don't have to worry about the perpendicular plate superiorly and the vomer inferior? No, but you, you do have to know the vomer inferior. I mean, you should know it, but I'm just saying. Yeah, because it's, it's the only question on the vomer. Okay. So. Perpendicular plate is the upper part of the bony nasal septum, and the inferior part is the is the uh, vomer. It's really easy stuff. Can you open it earlier? <laughs> Email me and remind me. I can't. The only reason why I wouldn't want to do it is because I'm not going to. Because of the Tuesday live. I can open it earlier. I just don't want them to try and take it. Okay. Because I have to read you with that. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to just. Why well, we didn't it. review the first one? They can suffer. <laughs> When's the first test open? The fifteenth at twelve. I have the first one. I got two. Yeah. Or the seventh. Yeah, the fifteenth are open to two. The seventeenth. Yeah. I just don't want them to try and take it early. They probably won't. I don't know. <laughs> so if I email you this weekend, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. And I'll tell everybody that I'll just tell everybody those that have Tuesday labs, um, don't take it unless you really want to because I'll review. Okay. I think it's just easier to get out of the way so I can then just focus on the two things. Okay. That's all. All right. So let's go over the clinical notations. And you guys must have written down what I said will be on the test because you see your this class was by far the best um, had the best grades. You're done grading them? All except for I I got halfway with yours and you're doing you're doing pretty good. I didn't do Shanna's at all but she doesn't count. She always <laughs> does good. <laughs> she always does good. I made the extra credit, really extra, extra credit because the, the students were complaining about the, the test being so hard and I didn't think they wanted to make us a little, a little bit for them. So I gave two points extra credit for each extra credit, two more points. Oh, wow. So, I don't know if I'm going to do it next week because obviously some people just didn't study at all. Yeah. I like it separated though. You like it? Notation separated from the test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's my opinion. I don't mind any of them. I think it's harder on her too to have two test days for yeah. like the same class. I agree. That I think is pretty good. I think it's easier for her to grade True. I don't mind it either way. Either. I just like it separated as a third by the one line. Put it on it's hard to talk a lot because you start to, you can't breathe when you talk a lot. Yeah. All right, so we'll start with lateral facial bones. You're going to love this because everything's exactly the same. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, so it should be easier. Okay. Usually the only thing that's different in the different projections is where we center. Okay. Skull versus facial. Okay, so for the lateral facial bone, number three, you need to know the mid sagittal plane is parallel with the IR. Same thing like we had today, the intercupillary line is perpendicular to the IR. You need to know that. You need to know the baseline again, it's the IOL mouth. And this one, the central ray, is perpendicular to the malar, which is also known as what? Good, which is also known as the zygoma. Don't worry about exposure considerations. Rotation and tilt, it's the same thing. For rotation, we check any vertical structure, and for tilt, we check any horizontal structure, specifically the orbital plates. Okay. It's exactly the same except for your centering. It's like blocked, which I guess is tricky. So. What does? Like it, how it's written? 
on your lateral, it's like blocked. It's like the word wise, like. Oh, it's. Do you know what I mean? No. It's a designation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Before I said superimposition, check the vertical structure. It says check any vertical structure for superimposition. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> You would notice that. <laughs> That's how, like, I'm, because I have, like, such a photographic memory of it. Like, when I study, they have to tell me to stop knowing it in order to do it out of order so I yeah. can get it down. <laughs> That's so funny. I didn't notice that. <laughs> okay, so we have two laterals up here. And these are for facial bones because you can see they cut off the back of the skull. Because the back of the skull doesn't matter for facial bones. So let's look at this one first. Is this one tilted or rotated? a little bit tilted because the orbital plates are really not superimposed. Not much rotation at all because here's the rima and the, the mandible here. All right, let's do a little bit of anatomy in here. So what's, what's this? It's the upper teeth, the roots of the upper teeth. The alveolar process? Yeah, the alveolar process. It's real spongy in here. Okay. I don't know if you want to see it, but what's this? It's got like a little tip. Spine, nasal spine. Is it nasal spine or? Anterior nasal yeah. spine. Anterior nasal spine is here. These are the maxillary sinuses here. And then if you just go a little bit posterior to it, that would be your malar bone. Your cheekbone is here. These are the orbits. There's one orbit, there's another orbit here. And that's basically about it that we know just to say our anatomy is concerned with. So we're here, what is it rotated or tilted? Looks rotated, doesn't it? Because here's one ring right here, and here's another one here. So it is rotated. Is it tilted? A little bit, yeah. Orbital plate here, here, and look at the body of the mantle. It looks a little rotated, or a little tilted as well. Are you good with the lateral? Mm -hmm. All right, this is the only one that's different. It's the water projection. And just like it says at the very bottom, you need to know that it's considered the money shot. So it, you can see just about anything that you might want to see with the water. Some places all they do is waters. For facial bones. Okay, so know that it's a PA projection. You know the baseline, the baseline, the MML is perpendicular to, to the IR. I'm another one of these things that I never understand, but anyway, this should place the OML at a 37 degree angle with the plane of the IR. Write this down, I didn't put it on there. So when you use the MML, you're going to place the patient's chin on the IR. It's going to go on the IR. Okay, the center ray for this is perpendicular beam and it exits the, the acanthium. The reason why it says it exits is because it's a what projection? PA. So in, in, in your note in minerals, it says where it should enter. I don't, don't worry about it. Just know that it should exit the acanthium. For rotation, just like the Caldwell, measure from the lateral side of the orbit to the lateral side of the skull. It should be equidistant, just like the PA Caldwell. For tilt, just like the Caldwell, the Petrus ridges should be in one horizontal plane. Okay, your quality check for correct baseline beam relationship, you, sh you should see the Petrus ridges immediately below the maxillary sinuses. They're also known as anterior primal. So if you think about it, if the Petrus ridges are too low, you have the chin too high. And it's the opposite. So if Petrus ridges are too low, the patient's chin is up too high, then you just lower the chin a little bit. And if the Petrus ridges are too high, you raise the chin up a little bit. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, and this projection is considered the money shot. Let me go over the 
please. Don't worry about that. Re the first reverse waters, it's the same as the bottom one. I don't know why I put that on there. But the reverse waters, if it's trauma, um, just know that however you do the waters, the success of the waters at tenfold, must, the B must be angled so it's parallel to the MML. So if the patient's PA in a true waters, and they, you can't raise the chin up high enough, angle the beam caudid so it becomes parallel to the MML. Okay, so here I am, PA, and I can't get the chin up high enough. I'm gonna angle the beam caudid so it runs parallel to the MML, okay? And it's the opposite. If you're AP, if you're AP and you can't get the chin up high enough, you're gonna angle the beam cephalic so it runs parallel to the MML. Remember the MML is from the mentum mm -hmm. to the EAN. It's this way. Okay. So you need to know both of those. And also remember that um, which position would give you uh, magnified orbits? AP. AP. Here's some waters hanging up here. Okay. So let's talk about correct baseline beam relationship, first of all, with this one. What should we see? If we use the correct base. Hmm? Petrus ridges. Petrus ridges should be where? Below the maxillary sinuses. Yeah. It should be just below the maxillary sinuses. So the maxillary sinuses are triangular mm -hmm. in shape, and here they are here, this one's here. So what would you do? You need to put the chin up just a little bit because see how the petrus is in the floor of the maxillary sinus, especially on this side, a little bit here. That could look like fluid, all right, if, if that mixed up with fluid. So that one really should be repeated because we, we need to lift the chin up just a teeny little bit more to open that floor of the maxillary sinus up. Can either be completely separated? It needs to be out of, them, okay. out of the maxillary sinuses because that, that's what they look for is fluid in the maxillary sinuses, whether it's trauma or just sinusitis. Okay. The, the problem with the maxillary sinuses is, and you know, don't have to write this down, but the maxillary sinuses don't drain from the bottom, they drain from the top. Mm -hmm. So that's why people, a lot of people have problems with the maxillary sinus because they don't drain out that well. They don't drain down, they drain up. So they're really looking for fluid down here. Okay. What's this? Perpendicular plate? Okay, the top of it is the perpendicular plate. What's the bottom? The bone. Yeah, the bone. And what, is, what do those two make up? Bony nasal sub. Yeah, the perpendicular plate is the ethmoid bone. You're right. Okay. <laughs> What's this? Yeah, the dominant line or greater width. What are these? Frontal sinuses. Frontal sinuses. Just posterior to the maxillary area is what bone? Um, coming down here, and we'll go over this when we get to the mandible as well. This clean thing coming right here, that's the coronoid process of the mandible. The condyle comes over here. So the coronoid is the really, remember that the coronoid process of the mandible is the anterior one, this up here, and that's the condyle got that little dip in it there. So that pointy thing, that's the coronoid process. We'll label it when we get to our imaging. Okay, coming over here, this waters. What about correct baseline beam relationship? Or Petrus ridges? They're way down here. So what would, they're pretty low, that's pretty low. What would you go back and do? Lower the chin? 
Lower the chin just a little bit. Yeah. Bring, bring the pinky scrapings up a little bit. Yeah, a little bit too low. That's the coronoid process of the mandible and the condyle goes to. I always just follow the brain light up on the condyle. Maxillary sinuses, nice and open. What about, I don't want to go over it. What about rotation here? That's so dark, you can't see it. What about this one for rotation? It's a little rotated, huh? Because if I go from the lateral margin of this orbit to the lateral margin of the skull, and then go from this to this, see how much further that is away? So it is a little rotated. What about tilt? What do we look at? Yeah, the pinkish radius should be one horizontal plane. Not bad. Yeah. Over here, here's the other water, so that's the call book. So, correct baseline beam relationship. too low, but it's not worth repeating because we don't see anything. This one is um, an open mouth waters. Have you guys seen that at, at the VA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they still do them at the VA. The they do that maybe on orbits. Yeah. Yeah. The open mouth waters, I'll get to it when we talk about sinuses, that shows a, it shows a good view of the sphenoid. This is all sphenoid sinus in here. The registries in there like that. Okay, so we see nice and open maxillary sinuses. See if this one's got a deviated septum. Okay, let's go on. Okay, Caldwell. Here we go again, same thing. Exactly the same. So the baseline for the Caldwell is the OML. And it's perpendicular to the IR. The center ray is 15 degrees caudal and it's centered to the nasium. Okay, everything's exactly the same as the skull. Um, you should see the petrus, if you use that 15 degree beam angle, you should see the petrus ridges in the lower one third of the orbit. If you want to get the petrus ridges out of the orbit, the second one angle to be 25 degrees. So what, what did they do here on this call wall? 15 degrees or 25? 25. Yeah, 25. The petrus ridges are just out of the orbit. So a lot of times with facial bones, they want to see more orbital area. So they'll tell you just to make sure the petrus ridges are out of the orbit. Okay, tilt and rotation is exactly the same as the other tilt and rotation in the other caudal for the skull. Rotation from the lateral part of the orbit to the lateral part of the skull should be equidescent. Tilt the petrus ridges in one horizontal plane. Is there a reason why you'd want to see the orbits outside of it versus inside, like a true one? Um, are you looking for something specific? No, a true call well is the petrus ridges should be in the lower one third. That's yeah. more for a skull. A lot of times for facial bones, they're more interested in the front area because facial bones, they'll tell you to do that to get the petrus ridges out. They don't care about the petrus ridges, they care about a little bit more. Okay. I just wondered if there was a lot of places don't do facial bones the same way as they don't do. Um, Skull. They do do sinuses, okay, which is coming up in the next uh, section. A lot of places do sinuses. They don't do TMJ, and I don't know why it's still on the registry, but it's coming up as well. They TMJ used to. does. Yeah. TMJs? Mm -hmm. Get out of here. Yeah, I saw like two back to back. Really? Mm -hmm. Did they nobody knew what they were doing. Oh, because <laughs> they, they all looked at our books. <laughs> they, never, they run, they go, oh my God, that says TMJs. I, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, because 
Um, Beryl was brand new. He he was he came from your class, but he worked at St. Joe's South. Yeah. He was sent to the VA. He's like, I think I know what I'm doing, but let me see your book. <laughs> I was like, okay. But no other tech knew. They're like, I don't know how to do that. That's funny. Wow. Hmm. All right, so maybe that's why they still have it on the registry. <laughs> okay, zygomatic arches. Okay, there's a couple things you can do to see the zygomatic arch. Number one, it first talks about the SMV projection. So the baseline is the same as the SMV for the skull. Number four, the IO eval is parallel to the IR. Don't worry about that, the whole the beam should be perpendicular to the IO eval, and we already did that, so I'm not gonna go through that again. Don't worry about exposure considerations. All right, so the part, the quality check that you need to know, you need to know if you see one more than the other, it was rotated towards that side. So if you're doing the SMB and you see more of the right one, it was just rotated a little bit too much towards that side, it pops it up. Okay. So let's look at, at first let's look at this one. Which one do you, see? I mean, this is picture perfect practically, but which one do you see a little bit more popped out? The right or the left? The right one, there's a little more space in the right one than the left. But let's say you didn't see the left at all, you saw all that on the right. What would you go back and do? Turn it to the left. Turn it to the left a little bit. Good. Okay. Y'all get that? Tangential projection. This is for people that you just can't see the zygomatic arch. Sometimes you can't. They, they have really little uh, cheekbones, really depressed cheekbones. So the, under the quality checks, um, this projection is especially good for patients with de depressed fractures or flat cheekbones. You do this. Okay, so all you do is have them in the SMB po uh, position and then rotate whatever side you want to see. I mean, it's just slightly. Rotate the side of interest 15 degrees towards that side. So a lot of times they just do both. Okay. So you're rotating 15 degrees toward the side of interest. Okay. So here's this one here. So they just rotate it a little bit that way, 15 degrees that way. You still can't see it very well. So this one, here's the left side, here's the right. What would you go back and do? Turn it to the left just a little bit. If you see more of the right than you do the left. Okay. All right. Oh, okay, the one at the bottom. It's a town method. I don't see this very often, but anyway, it's just like a town's proje projection. It's AP. Um, the baseline is the OML, and you angle the beam 30 degrees, caught it. Don't worry where you go through it, you're just going through the arches, but anyway, just know that the beam is angled 30 degrees, caught it. And just like we saw in, in our towns, when we did our towns uh, last week, you can see the arch. They just don't like them as much as they like when you do the SMB. So this is not done very often. As you can do a challenge for arches. No one ever calls me. That's my husband, he's gonna beat me up. Oops. <laughs> I just wiped it off. get out so she um, he's having like that, that issue <laughs> oh my god he is having a fit he wants me to walk over there I'm not walking over there <laughs> <laughs> so all right so nasal bumps remember we went over it with the nose remember that the, the routine waters will just show the septum you do not see the nasal bumps okay so we do laterals 
CO2 than they are. See, I mean, you, you have to imagine. Your nose is like this big, but the bones are right there. Okay, so for the lateral, what do I want you to know? You know the baseline, just like the lateral facial bones? Uh, I.O. mouth. You know the center ray? For this one, do you know the center ray? I've seen on a lot of registry stuff. It's a half inch distal to the nasion. You're gonna have to come up and walk me because we can get through, but this person has a little fracture. And then there's a bone. Okay, so what's the end? What's this called? And then there's a bone. The very tip. Spine. Good. Nasal spine. <laughs> Anterior nasal spine is here. Nasal spine is that. If you do have the raised position on nine, just cross it out. It's not on the registry. Any questions? Yeah. All right, we're going to take four images and then we're going to label them. You want to do those um, while you're sitting here? The, um, yeah, yeah. Before I forget and send you guys off. Are we getting more to put in our binder after the school or not? No. Sounds like um, next semester is going to be hybrid. The only problem is we don't have labs. Uh, you guys don't have labs. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm asking to do a hybrid, which just means I'll find out more this afternoon when I have a meeting, uh, which just means that Terry doesn't want to do hers all online with you guys because it's physics and, and uh, digital. Mm -hmm. So she wanted to do like a hybrid, meaning that there can only be a certain amount of you coming in. She would have to do a whole day of like in threes. So there can't be any more than 10 people, including her in, you know, like every two weeks to come in and review, which I think would be great for, for you guys. So that's what we're trying to do. Will you be here too? With her? <laughs> well, I mean in your office. I don't plan on it. Okay. I'll be doing the juniors. I'm gonna do their their class hybrid and their labs, which is wonderful. I have labs with them. So I can do like I'm doing now with you guys. Mm -hmm. It's my excuse for you're here. So but if you want me to, just let me know like if you want to meet. Well, to, she said that she's better, but I'm just saying sometimes we have a question and we kind of explain it better. I believe right. your class is with her. No, I'll be here Thursday. Okay. With her. Okay. Because I'll be here with the junior Thursday. You have Terry Monday and Thursday. I we have clinical Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. On Sunday. Well, well I'll just have Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. I think it's Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Is it Friday? Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. Remember, Thursday. So I'll be the one that's in that. Okay. All right. So let's do this. So pages one through 15. Okay. The first are just color this and color that. Um, one and two. It just tells you to name the eight cranial bones. You guys can do that. Um, 
Oh, if you look up, number one is the parietal. Number two is the sphenoid. Three is the temporal. And four is the frontal. Okay, page four. Number one is the frontal. Number two is the sphenoid. Number three is the parietal. Number four is the occipital. And five is the temporal. Okay, page five. Number one is the frontal. Number two is the temporal. Number three is the occipital. Number four is the ethmoid. And number five is the sphenoid. Okay, page six. Number two is the right parietal. Number one is the left parietal. And number three is the frontal. Okay, on page seven, number one is the frontal. Two is the parietal and three is the occipital. Page eight, number one is the frontal. Three is the occipital. Two are the temporal. Four is the sphenoid and five is the ethmoid. Okay, page nine, it goes three, four, two, and one. Okay, page 10, starting at the top. Nine is inner canthus, 16 is outer canthus, 15 is SOM, 11 is SOG, three is superciliary, 20 is the EAM, four is the inion, 13, 10 is the glabella, one is the parietal, seven is frontal eminence, 12 is the mental point, five is the nasion, six is the cellar point, 14 is the mastoid process, eight is the acanthion, 19 is the TEA, 18 is the anterior nasal spine, 17 is the oracle, and two is the vertex. Okay, page 11, these are baselines. Three is IOML, two is OML, four is acanthiomeatal, one is the glabellomeatal, five is the mentomeatal, six is mid-sag, nine is transverse, eight is interpupillary, seven is corona. Okay, the first one says list the sutures, and number two on the diagram. Number one is sagittal, number two is coronal, and three is squamosal. Okay, 13. Number one is the brigma, which is the second question. Number four is the lambda. First question, number two is the coronal, three is the squamosal suture, and five is the lambdoidal. Okay, 14, seven is the squamous portion. You can have eight or four as the horizontal portion, could be either one. Nine is the glabella, one is the frontal eminence, 10 is the SOG, 11 is the SCA, four or eight is the SOM, three is the supraorbital foramen, two is the coronal suture, six is the squamous suture, and five is the frontonasal suture. Okay, page 15, 10 is the squamous, three is the horizontal, five is the glabella, eight is the frontal eminence, six is the SOG, four is the coronal, seven is the squamous, two is the superciliary, nine is the superorbital, and one is the frontonasal. Okay. Okay, 16. Number one is the orbital plate, number two is the ethmoid. Okay, page 17, four is parietal, one squamous, two. Is that an alert? I think that's your yeah, alert. Your alert. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the phone off is what I need to do. <laughs> I do 17? Page 17? Uh, you were halfway in the middle. Okay. Four parietal, one squamous, two coronal, three is bregma. Okay, page 18. Nine is parietal, seven is bregma, eight is lambda, 
10 is anterior superior corner, one is anterior inferior corner, three is posterior superior, two is posterior inferior, 11 is the chronosuture, four is the squamous, six is the lambdoidal, and five is the sagittal. Okay, number 19, two is basilar, five is squamous, one is lateral, four is foramen magnum, three is jugular foramen. <clears throat> Okay, page 20, two is squamous portion, four is squamous suture, one is mastoid process, three is mastoid tip. Okay. 21, six is mas mastoid process, four is mastoid tip, eight is styloid process, five is EAM, one is squamous portion, three is zygomatic, seven is squamous suture, Two is mandibular fossa. Okay, 22, this is when I start getting lazy. Is four, three, two, one. <laughs> okay, 23 is fill in. A is squamous. B is mastoid. C is EAM. D is tympanic portion. Am I going too fast? No. E is styloid process. F is mandibular fossa. G is articular tubercle, H is zygomatic process, and I is petrous portion. Okay, page 24, three is lesser wing, one is greater wing, four is optic for Raymond, and two is super overall fissure. 25, number one is the greater wing. 26, uh, greater wing is six, Five is lesser wing. 11 or eight could be anterior clinoid process. 10 or 13 could be optic groove. 10 or 13 could be tuberculum cella. Nine is the dorsum cella. 12 is the posterior clinoid process. Seven is the cella turcica. Two is the foramen ovale. Three is the foramen spinosum. Four is the foramen lacerum. One is the foramen rotundum. And 11 or 8 is the optic foramen. Okay, number 27, it goes from 1 to 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, I thought they did that wrong. Well, uh, two of them, the optic groove and the tuberculum cell, could be flip flop. Okay. Okay, page 20 is 1, 2, 3. Or tw actually, that's 28, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 28. 29 is 2 and 3, there was no 1. 30 is 1 through 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and I might as well do. You missing one? Where are you stuck? I just thought you skipped 27, but I think you were doing it. I don't know. I thought you were doing 26. 27 was the one from 1 to 13 all the way down. I don't think it was. I think I tell until 13. Did you do 26? 26? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which one? All right. Facial bones. Coloring first page. Oh. Coloring second page. Third page. Just write down. Am I right? No, hang on a minute. I got the wrong one. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so one. It's a bunch of stuff. Number four is the body of the maxilla. Twelve is the frontal process. This, okay. Sorry. I started going over the same thing again. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. So one on the facial bone coloring. 4 is body, 12 is frontal process, 13 is zygomatic process, 17 is alveolar process, 5 is the vomer, 9 is the inferior concha, 15 is the nasal bone, 8 is the lacrimal bone, 11 is anterior nasal spine, 16 is nasal cavity, 14 is nasal spine, 2 is malar, 6 is mandible, over across the way, orbital bones, number 1 is the orbital plate, Number 10, 
10 is the greater wing, 7 is the malar bone, and 3 is the maxilla. Can you repeat the first three? I'm not really sorry. It's okay. 4 is the body of the maxilla, 12 is the frontal process of the maxilla, and 13 is the zygomatic process of the maxilla. Thank you. Okay. Page 2, so lateral view. 9 is the malar, 2 is the alveolar process, 8 is the frontal process, 5 is the anterior nasal spine, 6 is the body, 3 is the lacrimal bone, 4 is the nasal bone, <clears throat> 10 is the bone mark, 1 is the zygomatic arch, and 7 is the lateral mass of the ethmoid. Okay, page 3. Starting at the top, 9 is the nasal bone, 6 is the bone mark, 7 is perpendicular plate, 1 is anterior nasal spine, 10 is frontonasal suture, 8 is the nasal spine, 2 is the palatine process, 3 is the alveolar process, 4 is the horizontal portion, 5 is the vertical portion, 3 is the right palatine, 4 is the left palatine, 1 is the right palatine process, and 5 is the left palatine process, and 2 is the pterygoid process. Okay, page 4, 3 is the body, 2 is the anterior nasal spine, 5 is the palatine process of the maxilla, 4 is the zygomatic process, 1 is the frontal process, and 6 is the alveolar process. I think the rest are just pictures. Oh, no. Nope. The last one, page 7, that's the orbit. Keep in mind the medial versus lateral sides of the orbit. So number 4 is the frontal bone. 5 is the lesser wing, 8 is the greater wing, 12 is the optic foramen, 6 is the sphenoid strut, 7 is the superorbital fissure, 10 is the infraorbital fissure, 11 is the maxilla, 3 is the ethmoid, 2 is the, the lacrimal, 9 is the malar, and 1 is the palatine. I'm going to do the sinus stuff while we're at it. Sure. Oh. Don't have it? No. Oh. Okay. Okay, remind me next week. Okay. These are really easy. These mandible diagrams. Can I, can I borrow the first packet just to look at two pages that I missed? Of the cranium? Uh, yes. Please. Thank you. And don't don't look at where I said on test. Oh, I won't. Oh, only because I none of none of it's on the test. Okay. I've been uploading. I don't like that. Okay. So can I have the back half of it? The length of 15. Mm -hmm. the second half of it. Yeah. 